Perhaps your plant uses the Fisher 2500 level troll. It is designed to control, but it is commonly used as a transmitter. It is built and works just like the 2500T, but the zero adjustment is called raise level. It does the same thing as the zero adjustment on the transmitter. The specific gravity adjustment is called proportional band adjustment. Proportional band for this device is defined as the percent level change necessary to obtain 3 to 15 psi output. A proportional band of 100% means that it takes 100% level change or 0 to 14 inches for a 14 inch level troll to give a 3 to 15 psi output. A proportional band of 50% means that it would take 50% level change or 0 to 7 inches for a 3 to 15 psi output. Several things should be pointed out to you. First, it is logical that for transmission applications we will always want 100% proportional band so the output indicates the true level. Second, although the adjustment is called proportional band, it really is a specific gravity adjustment. To prove this, imagine a 14-inch level troll in water service. We will set the specific gravity adjustment to 1.0, since that is the specific gravity of water. A 0 to 14-inch level of water, or 0 to 100% level, will give us 3 to 15 psi output. What would we do if we wanted 0 to 7 inches of water to give us 3 to 15 psi output? We would set the specific gravity adjustment at 0 0.5. So you see the adjustments are the same. The reason we have proportional band and how it is used will be discussed thoroughly in Module 2.18. For use as a transmitter, the numbers on either the proportional band or specific gravity dials mean the same thing, namely specific gravity. Let's discuss another displacer type level transmitter. It is a Mason Elan 12,000 series liquid level transmitter. It does exactly the same thing as the Fisher level instruments and has similar adjustments. The displacer hangs freely in the displacer chamber on the torque arm supported by the torque tube. The torque arm is attached to the torque tube. The torque arm pivots on the knife edge bearing as the level around the displacer rises and falls. This produces a rotary motion at the end of the torque tube rod, just like the Fisher instruments. The reversing arc attaches to the torque tube rod and serves as a motion takeoff arm from the torque tube. The arrow on the reversing arc should point toward the displacer. If it doesn't, the reversing arc can be turned over. One end of the control link is connected to the reversing arc. The amount that the control link moves depends on how far it is from the torque tube rod. This is the specific gravity adjustment. For a given amount of torque tube rod rotation, the control link would move more if it was set at 0 0.5 specific gravity than it would set at 1.4 specific gravity. The other end of the control link is connected to the control arm. The point where it is connected is a floating pivot. One end of the flapper rests on the end of the control arm. 
The flapper is held against the control arm by a spring. The spring tension can be adjusted by loosening the screw and turning the disc. As the control arm moves up and down, it causes the flapper to uncover and cover the nozzle. The alignment micrometer is the zero adjustment. This adjustment moves the flapper toward or away from the nozzle to synchronize the output to the true level. The nozzle is connected to the relay at the air manifold assembly by a small tube. This nozzle pressure which goes to the relay is amplified or multiplied. The relay is fastened to the air manifold by two screws making it easily removable for servicing. The metering orifice for the nozzle air is built into the relay. A clean-out plunger forces a small wire through the orifice to make orifice cleaning easy. Gauges mounted in the air manifold indicate the air supply and output pressures. The one on the right is for the output. The relay output also goes to a feedback bellows. The feedback bellows is opposed by a fixed spring and an adjustable spring. This spring is a hollow tube. To make this spring stronger, move the clamp or fulcrum to the right. Moving the clamp or fulcrum to the extreme right minimizes the effects of negative feedback, making the instrument more sensitive, causing maximum output change per level change. If the fulcrum on the adjustable spring is to the far left, the fixed spring is the only opposition that the feedback bellows encounters. The adjustable spring is actually a fine span used in conjunction with the specific gravity adjustment. The force exerted by the proportional spring is adjusted with the proportional micrometer, which moves the clamp. The clamp is locked in place with the locking screw. Using the schematic for a left-hand mounted transmitter, let's examine its response to a change in level. Notice the transmitter is direct acting and the displacer arrow on the reversing arc points to the right. Assume the level is 25% and the output is 25%. Then the level starts increasing to 50%. As the level rises, the reversing arc rotates counterclockwise and the control link moves down. This causes the left end of the control arm to lower. The flapper covers the nozzle and the relay output starts increasing. The increasing pressure in the feedback or proportional bellows causes it to expand, moving the right end of the control arm down. As the right end of the control arm lowers, the left end raises because of the floating pivot at the control link. The left end of the control arm restores the flapper and nozzle to a throttling position. The system is balanced again, but now the output is at 50%. The reversing arc is adjustable from 0.5 to 1.4. If we have an interface of 1.0 and 0.8 specific gravity material, the effective specific gravity would be 0 0.2. Set the control link to 0 0.5 and adjust the proportional micrometer for the proper span. If the fulcrum on the adjustable spring is moved to the right, the feedback bellows has to work against more force. 
Therefore, it takes more relay output to reposition the feedback bellows and keep the system balanced. We can compare the primary movement and feedback movement to two weights sitting on a seesaw. They must weigh the same or exert the same force downward in order to keep the seesaw level. We can call the seesaw the control arm. Suppose we add 10 pounds of weight to the primary movement side. The seesaw moves down X inches. To make the seesaw balance, we have to add some weight to the feedback end. However, the feedback side downward movement is opposed by springs. The weight required to balance the seesaw depends on the force of the springs. As the spring force increases, more weight or feedback has to be added to get the same amount of rebalance motion. Now work exercise three in your workbook. Three calibration methods will be discussed in segment three of this module. Let's focus our attention on the calibration adjustments for the Mason Elan level transmitter. With zero level, the displacer would be free hanging or submerged in the lower specific gravity material for an interface. Set the control link index to the proper specific gravity value on the reversing arc scale. Loosen the clamp screw one turn and set the proportional micrometer to the second mark from the left. If a controller is being used instead, set the proportional band to 100. Tighten the clamp screw. Loosen the alignment micrometer lock and adjust the alignment micrometer to obtain 3 psi output pressure. Raise the level to the top of the range and observe the output pressure. If the output is less than 15 psi, loosen the clamp screw one turn and rotate the proportional micrometer to move the clamp to the right. If the output is more than 15 psi, Move the clamp to the left. Tighten the clamp screw. Adjust the alignment micrometer to obtain 15 psi. Lower the level to zero and observe the output. If it is not 3 psi, adjust the alignment micrometer to give 3 psi output. Continue to raise and lower the level and make span and zero adjustments until the output is at the desired values at both high and low level. Be sure to tighten the clamp screw and alignment micrometer lock after each adjustment. The basic Mason Elan 12,000 series controller is almost identical to the transmitter. The zero adjustment is called the control setting. and the proportional micrometer is called the proportional band adjustment. It can be used as a proportional only controller or a transmitter. To set or align a proportional controller with zero level, set the control link to the proper specific gravity value on the reversing arc scale. Set the control link in the direct slot for a direct acting controller in the reverse slot for a reverse acting controller. Set the proportional band index at 100% and the control setting index at 5. 
adjust the alignment micrometer to bring the output to 3 PSI for a direct acting controller or 15 PSI for a reverse acting controller. Set the control setting index, which is the set point, to a desired value on the scale. Set the proportional band at a value in accord with past experience. If no value is suggested by past experience, a setting of approximately 40% is suggested. Admit the process fluid to the control system and adjust the proportional band to stabilize control. In order to keep level variation to a minimum, the proportional band should be set as narrow as the process will permit without cycling. If the controller is used in interface service, for example 0 0.8 and 1.0 specific gravity material, the effective specific gravity would be 0 0.2. To obtain 100% proportional band, set the specific gravity to 0 0.5 on the reversing arc and refer to the chart on the inside of the cover. A setting of 40 on the proportional band index is equal to 100% proportional band for the 0 0.2 specific gravity. Be sure the control setting scale and the control knob increase indicator indicate the desired control action. D or direct for direct acting and R or reverse for reverse acting. Both the control setting scale and the knob increase indicator can be turned over to indicate the desired control action. Control action is not changed by simply turning over the control knob plate. The controller action is determined by which side of the reversing arc the control link is attached to. Now work exercise four in your workbook.